Hi, my name is David Picot from the Depart Departamento of Sistemas Informáticos de Computación. Uh, in this um, unit, in this videotape, we are going to talk about uh, website design and how the principles of perception can be applied to web design. Okay. In, in particular, we are going to talk about Gestalt psychology and its application to web design. Um, Gestalt psychology was a psychological theory that was created in Germany during the early 20th century. This, uh, this theory uh, was a, a, an answer to the tendency in that, in that moment of time of scientists to cut all the experience in, in small elements. Everyone wanted to understand things uh, making little pieces. And Gestalt, Gestalt uh, psychology was a tendency that had new ideas about how different elements, when they behave as a whole, should be understood as a whole. And new things happen that you cannot understand unless you think of it as a whole. Uh, the main theorists were Wertheimer, Kuller, Kafka and Lewin. And one of the main concepts is the concept of Gestalt, which is a German word that cannot be translated into English easily and means uh, something like shape, form, a configuration or a structure. A word that has a, a, a meaning that covers the different uh, meanings of, of these words in English. The, one of the main ideas, of, or most famous ideas of Gestalt psychology is the sentence the whole is the different, different from the sum of the parts. This means that uh, different parts when they are a whole, they behave as a whole, new features arise, new characteristics uh, arise that cannot be explained as the sum of the parts. Okay, uh, the Gestalt psychology was centered in, particularly, in particular in visual perception. They studied visual perception most, mostly. Uh, the perception pr principles of Gestalt therapy are some laws that they uh, developed and, and experimented that uh, explain, try to explain how human perception can uh, process the, the, the information. All these perception principles have to do with, uh, in particular, the grouping of individual elements in larger units. Uh, this is to say how we are able to perceive group it, groups of elements and also the formation of figures. Uh, this is how there are elements when in a visual perception there are some elements that we perceive as a figure against a uh, background. For example, the, this figure on the left is one of the most famous figures in, in gestural therapy and oh, pictures. Uh, depending of what your brain is doing and what your perception is doing, you may perceive here two faces looking at, at each other against a, a background with a background which is black, or you can see a cup which can be seen against a, a background which is uh, white. Okay, this is uh, the most famous example of how you can make, uh, can see a figure and a background. The grouping, this is a, a good example of how grouping works. Most people here can see different uh, shapes, small shapes in, in black, uh, elements which are isolated one from each other. There is no, apparently there is no relationship. And usually when you look at the picture for a little time, then you realize that there is a dog, a Dalmata dog, that it's, uh, you can see a Dalmata dog that is, uh, somewhere in a garden. This dog is not real, is not drawn. It's just an effect that comes from how the different uh, little elements in black are placed. Okay, the application to web design, it's uh, the application of these principles to web design is, is very interesting because uh, Websites display, display a great amount of information that is perceived visually. In a website, you can see textual information, means words, 
uh, you can see multimedia information such as pictures, graphics, video, you may have uh, sound, but usually when you have sound you need some controls. So there is some, some visual information in order to control how the sound is, uh, is playing. And also there is information about how we are going to interact with the website. You need information about menus, links, forms and different elements that are not the content themselves but they are allowing us to interact with the, with the website. The user needs to organize the information. There is such a big amount of visual information of different, different orders that the user needs to organize what he, he, uh, he or she is perceiving. Uh, for example, in this, in this um, picture of a website, even though we cannot read the words, we can see that there is a menu, we can see that there are different blocks of information, we can guess that there are two blocks that are more important than other parts, so there is a lot of information about the content themselves that is being explained to us through the visual presentation. So the visual presentation is, is giving you a lot of information in a non-verbal fashion. Okay? That is giving you extra information about the content themselves, how groups are done, how colors are put, they're giving you information about the content. So they should give, be giving you information about the content. So uh, for the information architect, this means the person in charge of uh, designing the information contents of a website, it is crucial to uh, be, be aware that these things happen and keep the coherence between graphics and content. For instance, here in this picture we have a, a website, a slice of a website, and uh, the menu that we can see here in the top. This is using the metaphor of a, uh, of a folder. So, if we want to use this visual metaphor, we have to be coherent with that. A uh, folder behaves in a way that uh, you have different sections in a, in a paper folder and you cannot have the same, for example, you cannot have the same information twice. You have some information in one, one section and some other information in another section. Here, for example, it would be very confusing if you had the same information in different sections here. Also, uh, the metaphor of the folder indicates that there is a limit, a physical limit. So, here it would be a big mistake if, for example, I click on software and peripherals here, this, the, uh, this entry, and imagine what will happen if this changes, but also this part here changes. That would be uh, a big confusion for the reader because we, the reader expects uh, the, this menu to behave as a folder. Okay, so as I've said, uh, there are very many different uh, levels of information, or different types of information that are being displayed visually at the same time in a website. Uh, for example, we have the aesthetics, we have the visual uh, appearance. A website has to be beautiful. We want the, a site to be beautiful to, to the eyes. Also, we have the contents themselves, the texts, the videos, whatever is the information you want to offer your readers. On the other hand, you have the, the structure of these contents. The reader should be able to understand how these contents you are offering are organized. That's something important. The menu, for example, the menu bars have a, a function on that, because the menu bar are telling the users how the different sections are, are structured. Also, it is important that the user can have an, ori an orientation within the structure. When you're reading a book, you have the book in your hands and you know where you are. But in a website, you, you usually don't know where, where in, the, uh, in the website you are located. So, usually a visual clue is necessary so that the user can know. For example, uh, a, a common solution is that if you're in a section, in, uh, in a particular section of a website, the the menu, the entry of the menu, it's in a different color so you know that you are there. Okay? On the other hand, there are some interaction, you, there are uh, things like forms, formularies, for example, or controls for the videos that uh, are necessary for the user to interact with the video. And there is also uh, 
the something important is that in websites, not necessarily, uh, not all the information is necessarily uh, provided by the website because the, the readers can provide information as well. For example, as a, a happens in a in a forum, in a discussion forum, discussion board. So the user can can uh, can give information. So the another level is that the user needs to know if if he or she is included or excluded. The information belongs to who? Is mine or this is given by the website? So uh, the principles of Gestalt psychology in all this incredible amount of information I'm describing now, uh, the principle of Gestalt psychology can help us understand how the visual perception is transformed into information so we can make a good design and help uh, the different levels of information be clear to the, to the reader. Uh, an information architect, as I said, must be, uh, must be looking for uh, a good design that uh, is not only beautiful but is giving the information visually that corresponds to the real information that you have. Finally, the two, one of the two elements which are more interesting uh, of Gestalt psychology with respect to web design are figure ground relationships, as I said, because this determines what is being emphasized and how the reader's attention is driven. The way we make in a website something to, to outstand that uh, helps the reader address their, the, the point of attention. So that's very important. And another important thing is how visual groupings have a relationship to the content. The visual groups of things is giving some information about what is related to what. How the information is in relationship. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.